Hello everyone. Um, I've been away for a while, haven't I? I'm really sorry about that. I got a little bit ill and it's just taken me a while to get the pace back, I think. It's felt at times a little bit like an uphill battle, but um, I'm all good. And I'm really excited to have been painting a lot these last few weeks. This month on Patreon, we are looking at the hierarchy of angels. So something that I've really wanted to explore for such a long time and always been too afraid to take on the wings, you know, like just such a complicated structure. And I say this all the time when people ask, like, how can I develop my art, etc. Honestly, the thing that's broken me through is study. So on Instagram, you can kind of see the history of how I paint wings and that progress to this point where they're detailed and there are layers of feathers um, and the mathematics are right. Um, <laughs> I didn't use mathematics to map the wings out, but you know what I mean? Like that structure of the wing and the layers of those feathers. And I'm really happy with the way that these turned out. I think for me, it was about getting that level of detail and that aesthetic right, because I didn't want them to be super detailed because I don't want to paint super detailed wings. I kind of want the values to do a lot of the talking. So I thought I'd just talk about angels and the way that I painted these wings a little bit. But if you'd like a detailed breakdown of how I built up the layers, I have a tutorial on Patreon. It's available for either tier on my Patreon page. Um, so from three pounds a month. And it's about 25 minutes long and I go through all the different stages, um, building up layer by layer and how I separate the layers of the feathers as well. For me, the first and most important thing is to start to build values with gradients because that will take charge of quite a lot of the detail already. Um, it tells you that that wing is 3D. It tells you that the wing is formed around something and it's not just standing in space they're in a relationship with each other, each of these wings, the blue into the buff titanium. And once you have that gradient down, um, it's really, really easy to start seeing where you're gonna separate those shelves of wings. So you'll see me applying a richer mixture of the buff titanium over the top um, and then blending it out with clean water, uh, which is called dragging. And that helps to create micro gradients just under the tips of the wings and separates each layer to create a really soft sense of shadow and form. And as that builds up, um, it starts to look really exciting. I think the key thing here for me is not using a huge amount of detail, like I said before. You know, the little feathers on the top of the wing, they are very loosely just C shapes. I'm just trying to create shadow around my pencil line. And it gives an impression of that raised curved small feather on the top of the wing. And then on the longer feathers on the tip of the wing, um, I've got those darker lines that give the impression that the sunlight is coming in behind the wing um, as the feathers overlap. So there is a little bit of shadow and it gives a little bit of definition. I think the really important thing here is to always check your values. So you'll see me going over with the blue quite a few times on these wings and um, adding some blue as well to the shells of feathers. I was really playing around with how deep I wanted to go with my values. And if you don't like it, dab it away with a paper towel. Make sure that you're not letting it dry too quickly. But also there's something to be said for patience as well, because we all know that watercolour dries lighter than when you paint it down. So sometimes you just got to trust your gut and say, okay, that looks a little bit scary right now, but it's going to look better when it's dry. It's going to soften off a lot more. But yeah, checking those values is, is always really important. You can see between the bent wing that I've done the most work on and an unfinished wing that's just had that initial gradient wash put on it. You can see how far I've taken it with adding colour. And the really exciting thing is these wings have just been made with only two pigments, French Ultramarine and Buff Titanium. They're both from Daniel Smith and Buff Titanium is quickly becoming one of my favourite colours. It's really exciting for me to find something and love it that I never ever thought that I would. 
And I actually have Arlie Bean to thank for this because um, she loves buff titanium. And I was watching a video of her making that paint from scratch. And I was like, oh, that looks amazing. She was mixing it with a blue. I think it was like a cerulean blue or something like that. And it created this really amazing chalky sea green colour, which I always find sort of instantly attractive. And so, yeah, I was lucky enough to get some for Christmas from my husband. But I don't know what made me try this colour for the wings. I think I've always used Payne's Grey in the past and I always feel like it looks too cold. Like what I'm doing just looks very grey, very paper cut out. And sometimes changing things up and using a different colour can help you see the world in a different way. And it's a really small thing. <laughs> it's a really small thing. But it's it made me feel like while I was painting that I was carving these wings out of stone almost and they look almost um, sculptural so you might see them on the side of a cathedral or something and that pushed me into choosing the French ultramarine for the shadows and it definitely informed the style of how I'm painting these wings as well. So basically what I'm trying to say is you never know what changing things up will do for your art even if it's a colour or a brand of something, or you use a different brush. Um, those things are really important and are, they seem small, but they're a huge part of our experimentation as artists. I've done a lot of research into angels for this video and <laughs> they're scary. Um, I, I definitely knew that there were some um, quite fun descriptions out there for uh, the different angels in the different hierarchies because I'd seen people paint them before but I always thought that they'd taken quite a lot of creative license and hadn't really looked into it myself very much and I realise now that <laughs> very little creative license in what I'd seen there are some really strange shapes out there like the seraphim has four heads one of a bull, a lion, an eagle and a man um, they all represent different things You've got the Ophanim, or Throne, which was what I'm painting now, which doesn't strictly have six wings. The, the rings are supposed to be interlinked, or the wheels, sorry. Um, should be interlinked and have two wheels each, but I have taken quite a lot of creative license here. I've also given this angel a body, which you won't see in this video, but you will see um, flashes of. I'm not painting it here. But yeah, I kind of wanted to take this kind of weird, psychedelic... Um, somebody described it on Instagram, I had to look it up, eldritch um, kind of form, which means unnerving, for those of you that don't know, like I didn't. Um, sort of unnerving and uh, scary, a bit strange. And I love that there is a word for what I've painted. <laughs> that made me really happy. The eyeball was a strange one to get right because I started painting really heavily and it just did not look okay against the wings. Everything else was ethereal and faint and just almost ghostly. Or that, or the fact that this angel is so massive that there's some kind of... Uh, there's some kind of haze on it. You know, like when you see hills in the distance and they kind of look blue and hazy. Um, so the colour really wasn't right. I, I dabbed it away and while the paper was still damp, I added a little bit more pigment back in. And you'll see what that does. Is it just gives this kind of, <laughs> this kind of spooky colour level that's, that's pale and almost watery, but also really intense on the edges with that pyrrole red. I lifted all that intense colour off, but working while that paper's still damp just meant that just meant that everything bled together really, really nicely. And this is what I mean by the kind of weird, unnerving look to this. It's like multiple eyeballs within an eyeball, um, surrounded by this wheel that is supposed to represent one of the wheels of God's throne, um, at least in Christianity. Um, and then just this explosion of wings out the top that almost act like this headdress or, or rough around the angel's eye. You can't really call it a head. Disconnected from the body below, 
in a kind of submissive position to the heavens. I found this really exciting to paint. And it was one of those rare moments where I was just sort of drawing and it came from nowhere. But anyway, I just wanted to hang out with you guys really, talk about what I was doing, give you a bit of information on how I paint wings and how that kind of came about. So I hope you found it useful. All right, well, on to next week. And I hope you're all doing really, really well. I've missed you a lot. So give me a chat down in the comments. I'd love to catch up with you guys. All right, take care. Bye.